Good day. I would like to start off by quoting for, from a sermon from the 19th century. And I quote, I'm availing myself of my very first spare moments to thank you for all your New Year's greetings and to revive your confidence for the future of the work entrusted to the clergy. Notwithstanding its manifold trials during the year of 1864, I know full well that these troubled times have caused you no little worry. Besides, it is my binding duty to encourage you to remain firm in fidelity as your, to your vocation, in order that by withstanding the illusion of the devil, that the allurements of the world of, or the flesh may obtain the reward that has promised you the virtuous. Those words were from the blessed Basil Moreau, related to his French congregation of the Holy Cross in the 19th century. Words of gratitude and assurances of the re receiving of God's promise to the virtuous. Oddly enough, I find myself in the same position today, rendering heartfelt thanks for all the cards and prayers and gifts and blessings I received over the holidays. Anne and I are truly thankful. There are so many platitudes about the thankful, the, the area of thankfulness and gratitude that it's possible to become somewhat jaded on, of the whole situation. What if the only thing you had today is what you gave thanks for yesterday? Think about it. It's not the happy people that are thankful, it's the thankful people that are happy. We have so much to be thankful for. Of course, there's always something to be thankful for. Mostly, we are dutifully thankful in our prayer and attitudes. But secretly, don't we occasionally think that our life would be especially difficult with the pandemic, with the masks and the registering for mass and the not being able to attend mass social distancing, and, and the whole lot. Perhaps on a, in a particular day when, when we have to deal with that person, and we all have them in, in our lives. Secretly, don't we occasionally think that others have it just a bit better and just a bit more to be thankful for. I used to feel this way. And then I got an education on being what really thankful is all about. Recently, when discussing with uh, the marriage with a, of a particular choir, a lady chimed in with advice given to her by a par her parish priest. He told her to thank God for the gift of hearing each time we ran up to with up against a person who sang this far under the pitch. It drove her crazy. Thankful. Not that, that she was a better singer or the lady was a bad singer but thankful for the gift of music, that God created music that all of us can join in, rejoice, and be thankful for. While I was pondering this, admittedly Pollyanna-ish viewpoint, I chanced to meet an acquaintance who is undoubtedly the most optimistic person in the world. She always looks at the bright side of things. And 
I know this lady is hurting financially. She has family problems and, and dysfunction in her family. And it seems like she had nothing to be thankful for, but she always looks on the bright side. And she says, I never complain, I'm always grateful. And she is, that's true. And then one day she went a step further and she was massaging her wrist. And being inquisitive, I say, what's the problem? And she said, well, my ex-husband broke it. And they didn't reset it properly and it's always in pain. It's excruciating. Be thankful for that. But she was thankful, not because her, her doctor reset her wrist wrong or she's always in pain, but thankful for the fine and calm life she has today. The stress level has gone down tremendously. I think that's what St. Paul meant when he talked to the Thessalonians, to be happy in all circumstances, the good and the bad as we define them, or as the media and uh, society tries to define them for us. Have no currency in God's plan. God's will for us transcends all the bad luck, all the ill feelings, all the ailings and uh, ill health. God alone knows the reason for the outcome of our suffering. Perhaps as Pope Paul, John Paul II says in his apostolic letter, Salvific Dolores, on the human, human suffering, and I quote, every human being by reason of loving union with Christ completes the suffering of Christ and completes that suffering just as the church completes the redemptive work of Christ. Speaking of the church, we tend to view the church all too many times as a place to give and not receive. And I teach seventh grade PSR. And I showed them the video of, of the, the other day of the mass. And after its completion, I said, does anything, does anybody have any comment or something that they learned? And one girl pops up and she said, I didn't realize until today that the blood and the, the body of Jesus was a gift. I just thought it was something to do. That realization was, was an eye opener for her. And maybe it'll be an eye opener for you. It's a message that we should never forget. God bless.